Outside the small kitchen window, the sky shifts from black to dreary gray. Dawn must be approaching, though it's hard to tell day from night in this windowless place. Katie's eyelids droop with exhaustion. She prays the guard will soon let them rest, even if just for a few hours. As if reading her mind, the guard stomps over. What do you think this is, lazy inmate? Nap time? Get back to work, he bellows. Katie flinches, but silently picks up another potato and resumes peeling, ignoring the sharp pain in her hands. The guard checks his watch. It's 4.17 a.m., he announces. You've still got a few hours left to go. Katie's heart sinks. The weary prisoners exchange desperate, defeated looks, but keep their heads down. Anyone who stops peeling before I say is getting a nightstick to the skull, the guard threatens. Katie's stomach twists, but she forces herself to tune him out. As her blistered fingers scrape away at the pile of potatoes, Katie drifts into a trance-like state. She peels automatically, detached from the agony. When the guard finally barks that they're done, Katie is too numb to feel relief. She just waits silently for whatever cruel task comes next. The guard orders the prisoners to stop peeling and line up. Katie drops the potato and peeler, her fingers throbbing. It's chow time, inmates, the guard announces. March to the cafeteria now. Katie falls into line with the others, shoulders hunched. The inmates shuffle down the hall silently. Talking is forbidden. In the dreary cafeteria, Katie accepts her tray of watery porridge and piece of stale bread. Her stomach rumbles despite the unappetizing food. Katie sits at a long metal table, keeping her eyes down. All around her, prisoners mechanically shove the food into their mouths and swallow. The porridge is bland and chalky. Katie forces herself to eat fast, knowing the guards will cut mealtime short. Just as she takes the last bite, a guard bellows, Mealtime is over! He snatches away Katie's tray as she swallows hurriedly. The prisoners obediently stand and stack their trays. As Katie straightens, her vision blurs from lack of sleep. A guard notices her swaying. Get moving, inmate, he yells, shoving her violently towards the door. Katie stumbles but catches herself. After the brief cafeteria break, Katie is marched back to work duty with the other inmates. She sways on her feet, nearly delirious from lack of sleep. The guards assign Katie and the others to dig trenches in the hard, rocky prison yard. The sun beats down as they break ground with pickaxes. As the day drags on, Katie's arms and back scream in protest. Blisters cover her hands, popping and bleeding as she works. Around noon, a guard notices Katie working sluggishly. Katie blinks back tears of pain and frustration, but forces herself to keep digging. She lost track of the hours long ago. The prisoners are given no lunch break, no water. The guards push them to work faster through threats of violence. As afternoon fades to dusk, Katie feels ready to collapse, but still the guards bark orders, keeping them toiling by flashlight. Katie's limbs shake violently with exhaustion. She turns up muddy shovelful after shovelful, operating on pure adrenaline now. After 24 relentless hours, the new shift of guards finally arrives to relieve them. Katie nearly weeps with relief. Stumbling back to her cell, every inch of Katie's body racks with pain. She falls onto the cot and plunges immediately into a deep, dreamless sleep. Katie is jolted awake by a guard slamming his baton against the bars. Up and at him, inmates! He yells. Time to get cleaned up! Every muscle in Katie's body screams in agony as she forces herself to stand. She was only granted a few hours of restless sleep. Katie shuffles down the hall with the other prisoners toward the open shower room. She wraps her arms around herself, dreading the exposure. Strip, the female guards order. Reluctantly, Katie peels off her filthy uniform and steps under the freezing water. The frigid spray stings Katie's sore muscles and makes her gasp, but she forces herself to stand there, arms hugged to her chest. A guard tosses Katie a small bar of soap. Hurry up and wash, inmate, she barks. 
Katie drops the soap repeatedly with her numb, trembling hands. As Katie scrubs her bruised body, she feels the guard's cruel gazes on her. She squeezes her eyes shut, wishing she could disappear. Just when Katie thinks she can't take any more, the guard shuts off the water. Hit the showers, scum, she orders. Katie scurries back to her uniform, skin still crawling from the violating experience. She feels exposed and utterly broken. Still reeling from the dehumanizing shower, Katie dresses in her uniform with shaking hands. A gruff male guard approaches. Let's go, inmate. Time for your barbershop appointment. Katie looks up with wide, pleading eyes. But sir, you just shaved my head yesterday, she says timidly. Suddenly, the guard backhands her across the face. Katie cries out, clutching her throbbing cheek. Did I give you permission to speak, convict? He roars. You will go to the barber shop when ordered without question. He grabs a fistful of her shirt and drags her from the shower room as Katie struggles weakly. She knows fighting will make it worse. The guard shoves her back into the barber chair and straps her in tightly. Katie trembles, already mourning the loss of her stubble. As the clippers buzz menacingly, Katie squeezes her eyes shut. Tears leak out as her tender scalp is shorn once more. The guard wrenches Katie's head up when he's finished. You'll be shaved daily now for your disobedience, he snarls. Katie can only sob brokenly as she is unstrapped and forced back out to begin another day of agony. But her spirit refuses to be extinguished. The guard roughly releases Katie from the restraints and yanks her up from the barber chair. Katie's legs wobble under her as she's pushed toward the door. She reaches a hand up to feel her now smooth, shaved scalp. Tears continue streaming down Katie's cheeks. Each step takes monumental effort as she's marched back down the hall. Katie sniffles and swallows hard, trying to silence her sobs. She doesn't want to appear weak in front of the other inmates. The guard shoves Katie into her cell. She stumbles and catches herself on the edge of the cot. Alone again, Katie finally releases a guttural wail. She runs her hands over her bald head, feeling utterly violated. Katie collapses onto the thin mattress, her body shaking with each heaving sob. She wonders how much more she can endure. But even as Katie falls apart on the outside, deep in her core, a flame of resilience still flickers. After a grueling year imprisoned, Katie is informed she is being transferred to another facility known for its cruelty. Katie stands silently in her cell, clutching her few possessions as she hears the guards approaching. She takes a deep breath to steady herself. Heavy bootsteps stop outside her cell door. Keys jangle and the lock disengages with a loud clank. Katie's heartbeat quickens. Hands against the wall, inmate! A guard bellows. Katie complies, staring straight ahead as they cuff her wrists tightly. They grab her arms and march her out. Katie blinks under the harsh lights, feeling the guard's grips bruising her skin. Katie is led through a maze of grim concrete hallways toward an exit she's never used before. The unknown looms ahead. Emerging outside, Katie sees an idling transport bus surrounded by more guards with rifles. This is it. The guards tightly grip each of Katie's arms as they lead her toward the waiting transport bus. Their fingers dig into her skin. Katie's wrists strain against the metal cuffs binding them. She feels them chafe with each step as she's forced closer to the bus. Katie's eyes dart around, taking in the barbed wire fencing surrounding the parking area. There is no chance of escape. As they reach the bus doors, the guards shove Katie hard from behind. She stumbles but quickly regains her footing. Get moving, convict! One guard bellows close to Katie's ear. She flinches but doesn't make a sound. Taking a deep breath, Katie climbs the bus steps herself before they can push her again. She focuses on staying calm. The armed guards watch Katie closely as she makes her way down the aisle looking for a seat. Their gaze makes her skin crawl. Katie finds an empty spot and sits down, pressed against the window. The guards continue berating her, but their voices fade away. Katie centers herself, staring at a small crack in the glass as the bus doors wheeze closed. 
The transport bus passes through the towering razor wire gates of Lakeland Penitentiary. Katie sees the guards posted in watchtowers, rifles at the ready. The bus doors open and Katie is yanked out. Stern-faced guards pat her down and search her belongings for contraband. They remove her handcuffs only to shackle her legs as well. Katie clenches her jaw, determined not to show fear. A guard barks at Katie to enter the intake building for processing. The heavy metal door clangs shut behind her. Inside, Katie is stripped, deloused, and issued a new uniform. You're inmate 42781 now, a guard sneers. Hello, friends. I wanted to take a moment to thank you sincerely for watching my videos and engaging with my channel. Your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions mean the world to me and are what motivate me to keep creating content. If you're enjoying my videos, please consider sharing them with your family and friends. Word of mouth is so important for helping my channel grow, so I'd be grateful if you could tell others about me. And if there are any particular topics or stories you want me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comments. I love hearing your input. Your suggestions help shape the direction of my channel. Well, that's all for now. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for your support on this journey. I can't wait to continue connecting with you all through videos as the year continues. Until next time.